All right, hello. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to show you a quick drive through through the problem solving format. Now, this is a little bit different than the one I use for you in class. That's only because it's formatted differently, right? It's got all the same parts. It's just that it's formatted to fit a screen rather than to um, fit on two sheets of paper, right? So this is a lot more condensed. But it has all the parts, and so, you know, I'll put together a bunch of these for you over the course of the semester, and hopefully by studying them, you'll figure out how to use the um, problem-solving format. And this is something I'd really like you to get used to. So what we do is we start by reading the problem statement here. Um, a wheel has a small yellow mark painted on its edge. Um, if the wheel is initially positioned with the mark on its bottom, that will be on the ground. And then the wheel is rolled three quarters of a turn. What will the displacement of the yellow mark be? So that's what we have to do. All right. Um, now, how are we going to make that work? Uh, well, what we have to do is we have to go through this procedure. We've got basically five bits of this procedure. Um, these are sort of out of order, but... This is the first half, or the first fifth here. This is basically just trying to explore the uh, problem. Right? We're just trying to figure out what do we know about the problem. Um, after that, we're going to do two, and um, I'm not sure this might be something like hypothesize or categorize. Or something like this. This is how are we going to solve the problem. All right. Then we have three is the plan. So we'll plan out our solution. Fourth, we're going to do our execution. It's already written there. But, uh, this is going to be working out the plan. All right. So a lot of times you're used to doing both of these at the same time. I definitely want you to get used to doing them. Um, separately. All right, so we'll just want to do that separately. Um, let's see. Then down here, we have the fifth part, which is checking our answer. Now, this is not a complete reworking of the problem to make sure we did everything right. It's not um, reworking it in a different way to make sure we get the same answer. Both of those are really great ways to check things if you know how to check things. There's almost always two ways to do anything, right? There's usually not just one way to do anything. We might not give you the tools in this class to do everything two ways, but there's usually two ways to do everything at least um, in physics because the math is just a map onto the world. So we want to go through these five steps individually. Now, some of these steps have sub-steps, and they're a little bit um, fluid. Right, I could put some of these in different places if I really, really wanted to, uh, but in general, um, you know, the, this is sort of the right way to start thinking about things. Right, you should always do this exploration exploration phase first. You should always try to figure out what you're supposed to do on the problem before you start working on the problem, and so forth. So obviously, you can't execute on your plan if you haven't planned it in the first place. Right, so this is your dot exe. Right, this is your dot c. Or dot pi, or whatever, dot f. All right, so what are we going to do here now? We're going to start by exploring this. Um, and we're going to do those three parts. So Usually the best thing you can do, the thing you almost always want to do with a physics problem, is to draw it out. It doesn't matter how easy you think it is. Just draw it out. You'll see that people have been doing these for years always draw these things out. Because, you know, they always want to see what's going on. And because that's sort of the basic physics, right? So, um, let's see. We draw, we have the wheel here. There's a yellow mark. Let's see. Um, I 
had the feeling that yellow was going to be a little bit different, so let's draw the little orange mark here instead. Okay, so that's our initial position, right? This is initial. And then we want to, we're going to roll this three quarters of a turn. Now, but what does rolling mean? Rolling means that um, there's no slipping, that for each point here on the edge of the um, circle, it moves exactly that far out here. So there's no um, difference. If you roll something one half of a turn, it's going to go pi r, right? It's going to go one half of the circumference laterally. There's no slipping. That's what rolling means. And then you're going to come way over here, right? And when you do that, go back to our red ink, and we draw another circle. Here, this is a little bit farther, actually, because this is three quarters of a turn. And so we end up with, if it's going three quarters of a turn, right? This point comes here, that point comes here, that point comes here, and so forth. So three quarters has this guy um, being at the bottom, right? This guy here is at the bottom, so we have to go backwards one quarter of a turn here. So this, this is our final state here. So we've gone this distance here, which we have to figure out. Don't need to know it yet. And we want to figure out the distance between these two little part to these two little marks right from here to here so this is what we want to figure out um we'll call that d right we want to figure out that displacement vector all right that's what we're looking for okay so uh well yeah, you're saying that's what we're looking for is the displacement part oh, got the wrong one we want that displacement vector, so we'll find the displacement d. All right, and we also want to figure out what sort of things we know, right? What can we, what sort of information, right? There's information in this text that can be turned into things we worry about in the math part of the problem. Um, and we do that by categorizing the givens. And we do that basically with three different way, three different lines, basically. Uh, first, we have an object, a property, and we'll have a symbol. It's a numerical problem. You also have the value for that thing. but we always need to know what we're talking about. So think of this a little bit as an index. These are the things that can appear in your answer, right? Um, there are two kinds of things that can appear in your answer. There are things you know, things that are given here, and things that you can assume because there's something you could say look up in a book, right? Like the acceleration to the gravity or the density of water or something like that. Those are the things that you're allowed to assume in your final answer way down here. Um, this is one category of these things. That's this down here. So we're going to use this later on, actually. All right, so let's see. We have an, we have an object called a wheel, right? So that's our object. And let's see, it has a pr one property, right? Um, it has a radius. Actually, I forgot to put the radius in the in the problem statement, and it's turned three quarters of a turn. All right, so that's what we have as our data. That's what we're going to move forward with. Um, the only thing we want to see in our answer is R, right? The only thing we want to care about is R. Everything else should just be a number or a direction or something like that. Okay, because what we're looking for is this displacement vector. 
and you know the displacement is uh, you know basically the difference between two vectors the difference between the final and the initial it's the final position minus the initial position that's a displacement um, that's important because the displacement is a true vector right the displacement is something that doesn't change when you change coordinate systems whereas the position because it's sort of locked into a um, coordinate system right that's the whole point right it, it's the, pos the position is um, sort of locations on a chart for the coordinate system um, so we want to find that displacement this is the displacement is a vector and so probably our concept should be vectors the equation that goes along with vectors right we want to do something with vectors it's basically one of two things we can use now our equation that goes along with that is the definition of a vector which remember the definition of a vector the v for vector here not velocity or anything like that is equal to the magnitude of the vector times the direction of the vector and as much as I possibly can the direction of the unit of a vector is a unit vector okay I'm going to do that all over through the class I'm going to ask you a lot a lot of questions will just end with now put your answer in the form of the what I'm going to call the physical form of the vector which is just magnitude times direction right that's basically what I mean the magnitude of a um, vector times the unit vector in which it points and I do that because this thing this unit vector can get transferred from vector to vector if something happens to point along the same direction as something else so when we find this we want to use it multiple times and you know I keep asking for the unit vector because it's something that you're going to have to use over and over and over and if you can understand that then you'll be able to move on and do some uh, pretty cool things as you go farther and farther in um, your coursework okay but we have this vector guy right and we want to um, do something with it so we're going to put them in a coordinate system because vec vectors sort of exist in coordinate systems and um, this coordinate system here I'm going to use as the origin the initial point here the center of our wheel now why would I use the center of our wheel as our origin here why wouldn't I use down here or something like that well a uh, couple of reasons it makes all the vectors easier for one thing um, that might not be apparent right now but the other thing is that this is the point that's this has got one kind of motion associated with it. there are two things going on here right the center of the wheel is moving over here right so let's actually change to another color we've got the center of the wheel moving along here right so that's going to distance v for x I'm sorry v is for this so we're going to have the displacement of the center of the wheel doing something that's one of our vectors that we're going to have to figure out and on top of that we've got our vectors that are associated with the little yellow mark right there's a little yellow mark going down here so this is our initial position for that ye little yellow mark so the vector coming down here r i from the center of the wheel down and then from the center of this um, to the edge here there's another vector right r f the final position on there right so what's going going what's going on here is these orange guys are sort of talking about that other kind of motion we, the green motion is 
is the movement of the wheel in total, right, as a big unit. And the orange vectors are describing how the points of the wheel are rotating around the wheel. Okay, this is, I think, reasonably obvious. Um, and then we need to have one more thing here, um, which is a resultant D. So you'll notice what I've done is I've taken this drawing, which was just a wheel with a couple of marks on it, and I've converted it into a more mathematical representation, which is a plot, right? I've plotted all these things out in a Cartesian frame, which is going to help me write out my vectors later on. So that's what we mostly want to do with our early development, is that sort of stuff. But now we want to turn this thing into a plan. And how we do that is we always want our next step in our plan, this is sort of a backwards plan, um, this plan starts at our desideratum, the thing we want, right? We want something that has to do with D. Now, what do we know about D? The only thing we know about D is that, you know, it's a point from here to here, and that point is the sum of these vectors, right? It's X plus RF minus um, RI. That is, it's the final position minus the initial position, right? So we're going to find, we can find D then from vector addition. And it's useful to sort of write that out. D equals, well, first at X plus the final position of the little yellow dot minus initial position of the little yellow dot, right, from here to here. Okay, and I'm also going to ask you to learn these tracking symbols. Um, the tracking symbols basically tell us what each thing that we write down is, right, or how it's helping us, what we need to know. Do we know it, right? So, for example, D is what we're looking for, so I draw an arrow. So I have an arrow, that means this is what I want in that step, okay? This is the whole reason why this step exists, it's to sort of find a value for D. How about X? Do I know anything about X? Well, I know stuff, but that hasn't been mathematicized yet, which is a word I made up, so you have to credit me. In fact, if you ever use it, I want royalties. Um, so I'm going to put a little question mark by it. So the little question mark means uh, we don't know it yet. All right. And if we don't know it yet, that means it's something that we need an equation for down here. We've got these three question marks. That means we need three more equations. Now, for this particular problem, that's not too hard, right? Let's say we want... Oh, this would be Ri. Let's say we want to find... Ri. Well, how do we find that? Well, we do that with this thing, the definition of a vector, right? So how, how does that work? Well, Ri, well, let's see, Ri goes from this point here down here, right from the center of my um, circle to its edge. So what does that mean its magnitude is? Its magnitude is this distance, which is the radius of the circle. And which direction is that? Um, it's straight down the z-axis. So down is minus up. Z hat is the up direction. So that's down the down direction. So this is the um, unit vector in that direction. So we were looking for ri. We know r, right? It's right here. So this is a little filled in square is known. And then the z hat we don't have to worry about. It's a part of the unit of the system, right? It's a part of the system 
um, we don't have to worry about it. If you really want to, you can draw a little circle like that. This is what we're going to use. This open circle, rather than the closed box, is going to be um, assumable. Or it's a part of the coordinate system here. Um, the other, normally I like to think of that instead as the um, something that you can look up. But, you know, we have a coordinate system. The coordinate system is not going to change, so we don't need to do anything with it. If we had coordinate systems that changed, then the changeable coordinate systems, the changeable coordinates, or changeable basis vectors, that is, they would have to change. So they'd have to have one of these tracking symbols. Here it's not completely necessary. Um, then we have to go on to the other vectors. Well, RF, we have the same sort of idea, right? RF is again, it's from the center to that spot, R, right? And it's going directly to the right. That's the Y direction, right? Y hat. Um, we're looking for RF. It has the same magnitude as RI, and that's going in that Y direction. Okay, so we're doing okay so far. We have one more of these vectors left here, right? We've done RI, we've done RF. We've only got one question mark left over. Um, so let's see. Then we'd have x is equal to, well, do we know what um, the magnitude of x is? Well, we have a way to figure it out, but it's not something we really know yet. So let's just put that x there with a question mark. But we do know its direction, right? It is also going directly to the right. Um, it's going along the, um, along the ground there, so that's y hat. We look for that x, we've got that, but we ended up with one more question mark. That's okay, because we can figure out x. Remember, we said that the meaning of this rolling is that each one of these points along here that um, are on the edge of the wheel meets each one of the points along the ground once and only once. Nothing is, um, nothing is slipping too fast so that it, so that um, you know, you end up with some sort of shear or something like that. It's it's not like they're scraping against the ground; they're rolling so that a point on here gets mapped to one point on here. There's one; it's a one-to-one -one correspondence. So here we could use some other names for it, but it, what I'm actually going to call it this here is construction, because we know the condition here. We just have to take that condition um, and use our reasoning skills to figure out how big it is, right? So we're saying that if this goes three quarters of the way around, right? Then this distance is the same as this distance three quarters of the way around, right? And we know that the um, circumference of this guy would be 2 pi r, right? We're going 3 quarters of the way around. So that's just 3 quarters of 2 pi r. And we're done. That's, all, that's that distance. So we just have to reason about things sometimes. Sometimes if you're stuck, it's hard to do that. That's why you should always do your problems early and come back to them, you know, once or twice a day. If you're not making any progress, go do something else sometimes is the best option, just so long as you're coming back and doing it. If you're just leaving everything till the last day, um, you're going to have problems, which is perfectly all right if that's what you want to do. Okay. So that's the plan. Um, now we have to execute on that plan. That is, we have to take this set of relationships and turn it into the answer, all right? using this math thing, all right? Actually, most of this is going to be just substitutions and simple um, arithmetic. Um, so there are a few math things that we have to do in this class, but 
most of what we're doing is just making some substitutions and, um, you know, doing some simple arithmetic. So there'll be a little bit of calculus here and there. There'll be um, some vector stuff here and there. This is vector stuff technically, but uh, the nice thing about using this unit vector notation is that Now that's bad. This doesn't have a Y on it. Um, oh, okay, so the reason why we use this unit vector notation is because it's it allows you to sort of follow your intuitions about normal mathematics. You don't have to, you know, go and find some new things, find out new things about mathematics. It's all just collect like terms and stuff like that. And we'll do that in just a second. So execution, what do we want to do? Um, well, generally we try to work backwards. So you see that if we take um, five and put it into four, then so we'll call this step A, if we substitute five into four, then we end up with our vector x being um, three quarters times two is three halves pi r in the y hat direction. And that's why I went back and screwed up my plan. It's because I got confused while I was typing this up. That we, We'll find out in the end, but it may have been when I was deleting things at the end that I got confused as well. Um, so, you know, when I make these up, I make up the last slide first, and then I slowly go backwards, um, taking things out, and that might not be on the same day. And sometimes I make mistakes in editing while I'm doing that. Um, sometimes I'm, you know, th this... I remember wondering why there was no y hat there while I was doing something up here. <laughs> so I know that I put this in after I'd done the plan. and I don't know why I didn't realize that. So anyways, I have to substitute a bunch of stuff again. Uh, I want to find this d, right? So I've got 5 and 4. Now I'm marking these off. I can use them again. I won't in this case, but you can use them again. But that gives me this, this gives me this A, and this A is ready to get put into that thing. I've got all the information I need to put it into number one. Same thing's true of three and two. They both also have all the information you need to put them in here. So the next substitution is going to take two, three, that's R, I, R, F, and A, which is X, and put it into equation one. So I've used all of these, right? And technically, when I do that, I'm done. But I'm not going to stop there because it'll be messy. Or it will not be the prettiest, is what it will be. So D, substitute in the X. We have three halves pi R, Y hat. Uh, RF, substitute in R Y hat, so plus R Y hat. And then R I, so we have minus R I, which is R minus Z hat. Two minuses. So you can see this is not sort of algebraically beautiful. We haven't, we've got a couple of things here that we don't like, like we've got a couple of um, factors of R, Y hat and two terms, so we can combine those terms. And we've got two minus signs, so we can cancel those. So we've done that substitution, but there's some other stuff we can do. That's perfectly fine. That's, that's not a major issue. Um, I'm saying this is technically done, though, because... You know, not only do I have an answer, but I've used all of my data, right? So it's kind of technically sort of possible that I could have gotten to a point here that um, isn't quite done, 
where I've used all of my um, plan and the previous things that I found in the execution. It, might be, it is possible that I might have to use one of these again or something, but that's pretty rare. It's pretty rare and it's pretty obvious if you run into that, which you probably will not in this class. Um, so I want to simplify B, right? And again, that means I can cross that out and I'm done when I'm done with this, just like I was already sort of technically done. So like I said, I want to pull out the R Y hat. So the Y component is um, 3 halves pi plus 1 times R times Y hat. Sorry for that. Let's see. Let's... Okay, let's make that prettier, even though I'm going to... There's a reason why I type these things up, and this is it. Um, so we have 3 halves pi plus 1 r times y hat, and we have minus and minus, times minus is a plus r z hat. So that is the answer. That is um, the displacement from here to here. And one of the things we do when we check is we look at if that makes sense. Now we have the symbols and the dimensions. This is basically, is it, is it properly stated? Um, does everything make sense that way? Um, but there's another thing that we do, the uh, last thing. Um, sometimes I call it lim for limits, but it's not really just limits. The way we do this here is we know what's going on here. This should be up and to the right up and to the right and it should be shallow. It should it should not be a really high angle here. We know that not just from our drawing, but from sort of the idea about what's happening, right? We know that the radius is less than um, half a turn, so it's definitely less than three quarters of a turn. And when we look at this, then is this up and to the right? And yes, it is because this is positive and this is positive. So those two things being positive is going to make it up and to the right. And is it shallow? That Well, the Z component is much less than, well, maybe not much less, but reasonably less than um, the Y component. So yes, it's shallow. Um, so you should always have some sort of reasonable idea about what's going on before you start the problem. And the picture helps with this. Um, here I have the symbols, so I want to see if these symbols are okay. Well, what symbols do I have? Pi doesn't count. Why doesn't pi count as a, num as a symbol? It's because pi is a number. It's just a number. There is nothing special about pi that isn't special about 2. All right. At least as far as we're concerned. As far as physics is concerned, Anything that's just a number is just a number. It's not really physics. It's just a number. Um, although there's dimensionless quantities, that's another thing. So um, those drive the world, and that's something that's really interesting. So anyways, pi is just a number. That's not a symbol. Um, one is not a number, or two or three. Those, these aren't symbols that we're looking they're, they're not symbols. They're not things that we're looking for. The R, however, is, and the R is up here in the givens, so it goes here, and there's nothing left over from that. So we have nothing universal, but we have everything as a given, which means this is okay, right? It's well stated there. The other issue is um, the dimensions, right? How do dimensions work? So first we want to check the dimensions of our desideratum. The displacement, what are those? Well, this is a vector from one place to another place. Um, its magnitude is the distance between them. Magnitude is the only thing with a unit, and the distance has a unit of length. So the magnitude of the, or the units of displacement is length. 
right? The units of vector is the units of a vector are the units of its components. All right. Um, so one half of that is the wants, and then we have the thing that we have, which is this guy here. Now, technically, you should check both, but usually what I do is I just check the weirdest looking one. And why do I check the weirdest looking one, the one with that looks messiest? Well, that's the one that's most likely to have a lot of errors, right? So we look at that and we say, okay, um, what are the units of three? Well, it has no units. Um, two, no units. Pi, no units. No units times no units divided by no units is no units. Plus one, which has no units, is no units. So basically we have the units of the three halves pi plus 1, which is no units, times the units of r. I guess we could say, what are the units of the direction y hat? Well, that's a unit vector. So this guy, the factor here, is a, no units, so that's 1. r has units of length. y hat, it's a direction, it's a unit vector. Unit vectors have no units, um, because they're called unit vectors because they are unitary, right? They have a magnitude of one with no units. Which is why you can transfer them from like the direction a, a string is um, pointing in to the tension in the string. So that is when we multiply these out, one times L times one is L. So these guys are the same, so they check out. All right, so that's important. That's the um, way that this thing worked out to, for us. The dimensions are okay. This the um, symbols are okay. This sort of shallowness is also okay. I do want to mention that when you do things later on, if you do not have an answer, you cannot check either your dimensions or your symbols. Right? They're not something you can do. You cannot check your answer. I, I don't know why people think they can, before you have an answer. All right. Uh, I get it on quizzes all the time where people just fill out the last part without having finished the, um, without having finished this to here. Or they get the wrong answer and they're trying to tell me that these things are correct in some way. They haven't tried to figure out that part. Uh, and that's wrong as well. So the point of checking your answer is to check your answer, right? It is not to um, give you points, right? It, you know, it's not to say, to, let, to have you go through and um, fill out a bunch of boxes. I don't care if you fill out boxes. Everything that we've, everything that we're doing here is sort of to help you in your problem solving later on. Um, I should mention how I grade these, I guess. It's going to be hard because I don't remember exactly the number of points, but they'll be graded out of 50. All right, graded out of 50 points. Um, I think the checking is six. All right, that'll be two for the symbols, two for the dimensions, and two for that limits thing that I was just talking about. Um, I think this is two, four, four, two, two, four. I think that's correct. So, ten... 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 for these guys up here. That feels sort of right. So that's 24, which puts this at 6 and puts this at 20. Okay, so this is what I really super duper care about, right? This is. The thing that we're going to do most. Oh, I forgot to draw the tracking symbols here. So um, please do that. 
tracking symbols will be part of your oops, this is a question mark. Um, will be part of the grade. All right. So there, that's sort of the first one. Um, we'll go off and I'll put a copy of this slide up online. I'll put a copy of the, um, I'll put a copy of this slide up online. I will probably redo this on the problem solving template and then scan it and put that up as well so that you can look at that. But you should um, study these examples. I put them up online for one thing, so I probably think they're important. And um, you should also try to work them and stuff like that. So that is um, a long time working a very simple problem, but it's um, the way we're going to work problems here. And I guess I've tried to explain a little bit about what we're doing along the way. So I will see you in class, and you have a great day. Bye now.